It's crazy how something so important is like this weird business where, you know, it's either run by people that don't give a damn about anything and just want to make money or they do kind of care but they want to be like rock stars. To make pizza in a wood oven good, there's so much attention that needs to be paid. To constantly be aware of how each pizza is baking, if you need to add wood, if you need to not add wood, and to just see where the hot spots are in the oven and just keep pushing it throughout the night. I mean, that takes years and years and years to learn and it takes 100% dedication throughout the night and focus. Me, the guy that works in the kitchen and the waiter, the three of us, that's it. We did every single thing in here. Tiled the floor, a counter here I designed and had a woman in Chinatown weld. I actually put the marble on top of it. You know, we get people to come in, like last week, some woman's like, oh, the dough doesn't taste the same. What are they doing? And the waiter's like, who's they? Like, there is no they. So I would hope that when people come in here, they really try to open their eyes and open their mind and see that, you know what? You might not like the waiter, you might not like me, but I just hope that you come in and you see that we really don't compromise and that we really do care and we're not trying to get anything over on anybody. It's the truth. It's not done in any way but with love and a little bit of anger. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. On the menu, we have just four kinds of pizza. They're basically all the same. They all taste really different though. One is tomato sauce, cheese and basil. One is just cheese, garlic and basil with no tomato. Tomato sauce, garlic, oregano and basil with no cheese. And then one is cheese, garlic and fresh tomatoes with basil. And they all have the same olive oil on them. Um, and that's it. It's not that I'm against other toppings on the pizza. It's that I feel like once you open that door, then there's no limit. Honestly, I don't know how you can control all those different elements and have them be of a high quality. I wish that I could grow everything myself and control it from start to finish, but I can't. I mean, I think you start to lose a grip on the quality of everything little by little by little. And also, more importantly, the taste. You know, it's really difficult to have something taste beautiful and interesting and, you know, make you want to come back again and again and crave a taste for it when there's like four ingredients in it. I think it's probably the hardest place in, in the world. Well, except maybe in Naples where they'll, where they'll come in and bust your windows if you don't pay them some money every month. None of these old time pizzerias in New York City, in my opinion, make good pizza. Not one of them. They all stink. You know, they learned how to make it 30 years ago. And if anything changes or ingredients change over time, they don't even know why. They just keep rolling with it. It might have been good when the original guy started it and he was doing it to survive and it was his life. But at this point, the pizzerias that are newer in the city too, the same thing. I mean, you know, they have multi-millionaires backing them and they get some guys that make pizza, you know, or maybe the guys are from Italy, whoopee. If you ever see anybody in America that says that they're from Naples and they're a pizza maker, if they were making pizza in Naples, they're making it at the rest stop on the Autostrada. Because if you're a pizza maker in Naples, you have like the best job in the city. It's like one of the highest paid jobs. They're super respected and they're in demand. They are not gonna come to America to make 10 bucks an hour and work 15 hours a day and be treated like a third class citizen. I've had four ovens. Actually, I think I've had five because I had one in my backyard that me and my father built. That was my first one. And we built that after I was trying to make pizza on the floor of the fireplace in the living room. And that didn't work too well either. <laughs> you can't make, uh, in my opinion, the same flavor with coal or with gas. There's nothing beautiful about it. The heat from a coal oven is not gentle. It's very dry and very overpowering. With a brick oven, you have the heat from the fire, the direct heat from the fire, you have the hot air, and then you also have the floor and the walls all being hot. I opened here and had a guy from Naples build me an oven. When he finally finished it, as soon as I fired it up, I knew that it wasn't built right. It's a shame, I mean, it cost a ton of money. It was still better than any other oven that I had. It took us two days to get it out with a sledgehammer. We ripped the front of the store off. I ripped all the walls out so that I could get everything out of here. Threw the oven in the dumpster and got another one. The oven that I have now is the oven that I wanted since I was a little kid. I went to Italy uh, in April of last year and went and met this man that built this oven in Naples. The top section came as one piece 
and in the bottom section I built myself and I had to hire some riggers to get it in from the street. It took them seven hours. They came up close, it looked like it wasn't even gonna fit. And it was literally an inch on each side to get it into this space. Every element of the oven works perfectly together. The ratio from the bottom of the floor to the top of the dome, the ratio of the circle, the ratio of the mouth opening from side to side, from top to bottom, every single detail is perfection. All night long, the more pizzas I make, the better it works. You know, it's really, I'm so happy with it. It's, it's really beautiful. The taste of the dough, the, the whole structure and the crust should have like a sweet kind of smell. It shouldn't smell of yeast, it should smell of wheat. The ingredients on the pizza, it should be lightly topped. Everything should be kind of in an even balance, you know, and playing off each other. It shouldn't be where, you know, you hide the dough with like, you know, regatta, pesto, black olives and everything else under the sun that's of mediocre quality. Um, it should be like beautiful dough baked properly with, you know, some seasoning and that, that's how you can tell, to me, a good pizza. The hardest to source is the Buffalo mozzarella. You know, pretty much all goes to the same warehouse in Italy before it's released. Most of the time, all the Buffalo mozzarella, at least for the Northeast, on the same few planes. So everybody that sells it is getting it, you know, in the same delivery. There's always a problem, like at least once a month it doesn't come for one week, dates are falsified. It depends who you know in Italy and how they're stamping it. Even when the buffalo mozzarella is not at its freshest, it still melts differently and looks different uh, on a pizza than, than fresh mozzarella, which is called fior di latte in Italy. When you take it out of the oven, it, the, the pizza looks like it has some life. It's shiny, it's glistening. The cheese usually has these beautiful little shades of like a little bit of greenish to it. And there's some people in America that are trying to make buffalo mozzarella, but I've tried both of them. There's one in California and one in Vermont, and I love the fact that they're doing it. I really wanted to, to use it and support it, but the taste is just not there. It just doesn't have the magic that, that the, the Buffalo mozzarella does from, from Caserta or Batapalia outside of Naples. Generally, I think pizza at home tastes better if you make it square in a pan. Like, not really Sicilian, not really thin Neapolitan, but kind of in between. Use any kind of basic bread dough. Try to handle the dough as little as possible. The more you handle it, the more resistance it's gonna give you. Make it kind of wet, especially in a home oven because it's gonna dry out. You're probably better off making it at home than you are buying it in a pizzeria.